Thank you. It worked two hours ago, so it's supposed to work. Thank you, Manus, for inviting me. It's a pleasure to be here. My topic is the conservative treatment uh, of shoulder pain in overhead athletes and the role of the scapula. These athletes are at a unique risk of injury because of their rapid shoulder movements. Uh, the injuries, they're often complex and therefore for us difficult to address. And the throwing or striking motion in the overhead athletes might result in scapular dyskinesis, pasta lesions, and uh, often posterior superior labral lesions. We have heard about the sick scapula syndrome from former lecture with the scapular malposition the inferior medial border prominence, coracoid pain, and dyskinesis of the scapular movements. We have both dynamic and static stabilizers, and for the dynamic one, that includes the rotator cuff together with the scapula thoracic <coughs> muscles, and to some agreement, the long head of the biceps <coughs> tendon. And the static stabilizers, of course, the bony parts, and also the fibrocartilaginous labrum, and the glenohumeral joint capsule. And even though, of course, injuries might happen after a single event, most often in these overhead athletes is a result of the repetitive overuse because of what they're doing. So understanding of the scapular motion is integral for us to understand and diagnose the pathology. And we have to address the treatment to the underlying cause, and that will most often mean our physical rehabilitation program. So Ben Kibler has shared a lot of his knowledge on this topic with us. This report is from 2013, when he, together with his co-workers, had this meeting where they tried to make a consensus for the clinical implications of scapular dyskinesis in shoulder injuries for different diagnoses. And we're going to hear more about impingement later, but it's definitely only a single diagnosis. It's more like a syndrome where the reports of the scapular kinematics in this syndrome are uh, are different. They are inconsistent in direction. But most reports says that they have a decrease in upward rotation of the scapula. Uh, clinically, that might be observed as shrugging, a sign of dyskinesis. And this might change the dimensions and the pressures in the subacromial space. For the rotator cuff injuries, um, most often it's seen an increased scapular upward rotation. And you might ask if this dyskinesis of the scapula is the cause or effect. Because in middle-aged people and older people, the most common injury is uh, the bursal side injury of the supraspinatus. So uh, the malposition of the scapula they have might alter the size of the subacromial space, so it produces mechanical abrasion and wear. However, in the athletes, the most often injury is the pasta lesion. And in this case, the scapular dyskinesis might be an effect of the injury because they have pain avoidance because they activate an individual muscle. Also, uh, superior labor injury is very common and has a high incidence of association of scapular dyskinesis. Uh, in this injury, that, that results in an anterior tilt of the scapula that changes the glenohumeral alignment, and it places increased strain on the anterior ligaments, and also increases the peelback of the biceps anchor. For those athletes also having the GERD disease, the glenohumeral internal rotation deficit, this becomes even worse. And for these patients, it's very, very important to improve the scapular stabilization, including mobilization of the tight anterior muscles. Then to the AC joint injuries. Uh, there are already controversies regarding the treatment of these injuries. And there are um, 
several planes that are altered after such an injury, depending on the grade of the injury also. And of course, these patients might develop scapular dyskinesis. Uh, those who develop scapular dyskinesis, they achieve significantly lower constant score and simple shoulder scores. And I think what we can agree on, on in this group is that for those patients who doesn't have uh, or doesn't have um, dyskinesis, those who have a normal scapular mechanics does not need an operation for their for their AC joint injury. For the multidirectional instability patients, um, they develop scapular protraction, many of them, with decreased upward rotation of the scapula. Um, that means that the humeral, humeral head uh, migrates away from the center of the joint as the arms moves. And um, the laxity in the capsule and the altered scapular kinematics and muscle activity um, might place the glenoid in a downward angle. And that means when you lift the arm, the head of the humerus will be pressed inferior. So to remind you about the anatomical adoptions that happens in a throwing athlete, the movement in the shoulder is typically moved posteriorly, meaning they have increased external rotation in the abducted shoulder. They also often have an internal rotation deficit. For the bony part, they adapt an increase in humeral retroversion and also an increased retroversion of the glenoid. The clinical assessment of the scapular dyskinesis, the very easy thing you can do is to make the patient lift their arms forward and to the side and observe the medial inferior border of the scapula for winging or prominence. And you should also be aware of if they lack the smooth coordinated movement, because sometimes that's the only thing you see, like in this person on the left side. For the conservative treatment, the kinetic chain is fundamental. And they say that the throwing starts in the toe. So it's very important to do a strengthening program uh, with all the elements in the chain. This is another report from Millet's group. And if you see only the red lines, um, the, the main point from this report is that the pathologic conditions in shoulder athletes is that they very often also have a breakdown in the kinetic chain. And physical therapy and rehabilitation should be, with only a few exceptions, the primary treatment for throwing athletes. So the phases of physical therapy, the basic is that you have to do strengthening exercises, you have to do stretching, and after a while, sport-specific exercises. So it starts with phase one in the acute phase where you have to allow the injury to heal, only passive range of motion in the beginning and a few active assisted exercises. Sometimes you need enzymes to decrease the pain and inflammation, and uh, the physiotherapist might do some massage therapy and manual lymphatic drainage. And uh, according to the stretching program, I, I just wanted to tell you that uh, it's reported that this exercise where the athlete can stabilize their scapula against the wall and do the adduction movement is found to be a little bit more effective than the typical sleeper's stretch. So when the pain and inflammation have decreased, you can move on to phase two with strengthening and neuromuscular exercises and still have to work on normalized range of motion. Uh, the strengthening program uh, might also be based on the weakness you have found in the physical examination. And it's nice to know that it's expected that they have much more strength in the um, external rotation than in the internal rotation. Move on to phase three where the athlete is not supposed to have any pain or apprehension anymore and then you can optimize the exercises for rotator cuff and scapular strength. They can start with plyometric training with high force and 
and a lot of weight, and I can also start doing a throwing program. Move on to phase four, which is a continuation of the strength program with more advanced exercises and uh, individual throwing programs. <coughs> so what if the conservative treatment fails? When does it fail? If you have a lack of improvement after three months, or if the athlete is in have inability to return to their competitive play within six months, then of course you have to consider operative treatment. So what to remember, uh, physiotherapy and rehabilitation should be, with a few exceptions, the primary treatment, the superior labor tears and pasta lesions are common in throwing athletes and that doesn't mean you have to operate. And the throwing athletes often have GERD, glenohumeral internal rotation deficit. And this condition also have good response to stretching exercises. Thank you.